Hi. Uh, so next we'll work through a series of examples on the mathematics of property changes. Uh, specifically, we'll work out relationships to calculate uh, the differential of a thermodynamic property of interest in terms of uh, any two independent variables of, of your choice. Okay. And the motivation for this is going to be is we are often encountered with uh, the problem of calculating the change in a property, say enthalpy, entropy, internal energy uh, for a given process. Okay, and we already know that for a single component, a single phase system, I have two independent variables need to be specified to fix the thermodynamic state of my system. Okay, and so where we're going with this is I want to be able to choose the two uh, intensive variables used to specify, say, my initial and final state to make it as easy as possible to calculate uh, that change in my desired property. So the first example we'll work out is uh, getting a differential for enthalpy with independent variables, temperature and pressure. So if I need to calculate the change in enthalpy uh, for a given process, and I know the temperature and pressure in my initial and final state, this will give me a way then to calculate the corresponding change in enthalpy. Okay, cool. Um, as we work through uh, the derivations, so I'll break it up into a series of screencasts, we will our goal is to get expressions, it, final expressions that contain only pressure, volume, temperature, CP, and CV. Pressure, volume, and temperature, as we've already discussed, are essentially our favorite thermodynamic properties that can be readily measured and controlled. And we've also, you know, gone through now several uh, analytic pressure, volume, temperature uh, relationships, right? And they're great. I physically know what they are. We'll also include CP and CV in that mix. So uh, values of CP and CV are typically readily tabulated, uh, most often in polynomial form uh, for ideal gases. And we'll see how uh, later on, once we bring residual properties uh, into the mix, um, those will allow us to uh, be able to readily calculate the necessary property changes. Okay. For now, though, we'll include CP and CV, uh, and just keep in mind that they're readily available. Okay. Uh, as I work through the derivations, I'm going to keep open um, my uh, equation sheet, which is also posted along with this video, um, and of particular interest um, will be our Maxwell relationships, which we have derived previously or worked out previously. As I mentioned before, these will be tools in our tool belt. Uh, and then also here is our uh, fundamental equations, uh, which we also worked out in our convenience function uh, screencast um, that we may need to bring into the mix uh, periodically. Um, that, so we'll also leverage uh, these along with our Maxwell relations. And at the bottom, here's our definition of uh, CV and CP, uh, in case you've forgotten from your previous thermal class. Okay. Great. So without further ado, let's work out an expression for uh, the differential of enthalpy with independent variables, temperature, and pressure. Um, uh, work out an expression for the differential of enthalpy with um, independent variables, temperature, and pressure, and our final expression, we want to only contain the variables pressure, volume, temperature, CP, and CV. Okay, great. So, how we're going to proceed, okay, is we're going to try and, you know, approach these things in a systematic fashion, okay, at least these uh, very uh, straightforward initial cases. So, if I want H uh, with independent variables, temperature, and pressure, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write out the mathematical expression for the differential of H with independent variables T and P. Okay. So mathematically, all right, I know that dH is equal to partial H partial T at constant P dT plus partial H partial P at constant T dP. Okay, so that's step one. I write out my mathematical expression for the differential of H. Okay, cool. So next in step two, okay, so if I look at this expression, um, okay, it contains enthalpy on the right-hand side. Uh, that doesn't satisfy our criteria of PVT, CP, and CV. And so what I'm going to do next is I want to look at this expression and see if I have a Maxwell relationship I can substitute in or a definition of CP uh, or CV. So looking, I know that this first term is just CP. Okay? So if I go back to my equation sheet, okay, CP is defined as partial H partial T at constant P. So I'm going to go now to step two. Okay? I'm going to plug in for this first term my heat capacity relationship. So I have DH now is equal to 
cp dt plus partial h partial p at constant t dp. So my first term's good, right? It just contains cp and t. The second th term, though, um, isn't satisfactory, right? I still have partial h, partial p at constant t. So if you go back to our equation sheet, let's look to see if I have a Maxwell relation. Do I have a Maxwell relationship for uh, dh dt at constant p? And the answer is no. Okay. So if I go back to this equation, okay, first term's good, second term's not. Okay. I'm stuck. What do I do? Okay. Well, when I'm stuck like this, okay, what I'm going to do next in step three is I don't have a Maxwell relationship or heat um, capacity relationship I could plug in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to our thermodynamic uh, definition or for uh, enthalpy, and I'm going to differentiate it or work out an expression for the differential of H with respect to P at constant T. So I'm going to go back to my uh, fundamental equation for H. I'm going to work out an expression for the differential of H uh, with respect to P at constant T, um, which will give me you know, an equivalent for expression for dh dp at constant t. Right? I'll recast this in a different form and see if that satisfies a requirement of only containing PV, T, CP, or CV. And if it doesn't, um, we'll see if we can plug in a Maxwell relationship or heat capacity relationship into that uh, equation. Okay? So I go back to my fundamental equation. Okay? If you can't remember, you can go to the previous slide and look it up. Okay? But remember, as compared to internal energy, uh, enthalpy swaps the role of my conjugate variable P and V. Okay, so I'll still have uh, TDS, but now it's plus V dP. Right? If you can't remember that, uh, TDS plus V dP. All right. So now, how do I work out an expression for for this? Okay. So I'm going to give you my very non uh, mathematical um, way to do so, um, which is correct and gets you the right answer. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is I want partial H, partial P at constant T. So I'm going to divide through, okay, I'm going to divide my differentials by dP. Okay, so I divide through by dP. Um, and then, since I can only differentiate with respect to a single variable at a time, okay, I'm going to hold T constant, okay, at which point these become curly differentials. Okay, so it's become curly, and t is constant. Okay, and then we just need to simplify it. Okay, so now on the left I have partial h, partial p, and constant t. Okay, that's what I'm after. I'm trying to get an alternative expression for dh dp at constant t, and that's equal to. Okay, well can't simplify this at all, so that's just T partial S partial P at constant T plus, now we have V partial P partial P at constant T. So partial P partial P would just be 1, so this is just V. Okay, so now if I look at this expression, okay, at first glance it doesn't look like it necessarily gets us any further because I still have partial S partial P at constant T. But I said, well, Let's go back over to our equation sheet now and see if this new expression has a Maxwell relationship that we can plug in. All right, and I see I have partial S, partial P at constant T is equal to negative partial V, partial T at constant P. So this allows me to rewrite this as partial H, oh, hold on, little pen malfunction, partial H, partial P, a constant t then is equal to, I'm going to write the v term first, v minus t, and then d, so negative t, because ds dt, yeah, ds dp a constant t is negative dv dt a constant p. Okay, so this would be dv dt a constant p. Right, so now I have an expression for dh dp a constant t in terms of just pv and t. So if I go back and I plug that in here, right, I want to plug that into this expression. Now I have, okay, that leads me to dh is equal to cp dt 
plus v minus t partial v partial t a constant p dp okay so now i've achieved my goal where i've worked out an expression for the differential of h with independent variables t and p which only contains the variables cp or cv pv and t right cool right so i have my expression now for dh hey cool okay um, so again, you know, CP in theory would be uh, uh, readily um, uh, readily available, uh, say in the form of a polynomial expression uh, for an ideal gas, but just keep in mind it's readily available. Um, and then I can calculate these necessary terms uh, from uh, my PVT relationships. Okay, great. Okay, uh, I guess one thing to point out to keep in mind um, is so here, right, so if I want to calculate the second term, right, I'm going to integrate with respect to independent, uh, independent variable P, here I have this term dv dt a constant p, right? And so, um, you know, this doesn't mean that, you know, pressure is constant, and so, you know, it would just be zero if I'm integrating with respect to p. Like, there's no uh, disconnect, right? This would just be, um, so say temperature was constant and this first term went away, and so dh was just the integral of, of the second term. So as I integrate from my initial pressure to my final pressure, Okay, this term dv dt is going to change at each pressure, right? So at each pressure along that path, right, I could recompute this value. Okay, so if I'm going, say, from one bar to two bars, right, at one bar, I could calculate dv dt, the differential of v with respect to t, at, you know, constant pressure one bar. Then I could compute it at, you know, 1.1 bar, 1.2 bar, uh, and so on and so forth, right? And so, you know, this becomes, you know, this is an expression that changes with p, right, because the pressure that's being held fixed when I compute that differential is, is changing. Um, but perhaps more on that in the future uh, when we work some of these animals out, okay? Cool, okay, so I achieved my goal, right? So I just worked out an expression for the differential of H with independent variables T and P, okay? So oh, we'll get to uh, residual properties again. Um, ah, even worse. We'll get to residual properties again in the future uh, to see some of these things in practice. Uh, but one thing uh, that came up in, in Thermal 1 that, you know, you essentially just took for granted in Thermal 1, we're always told that, you know, enthalpy and internal energy uh, are only functions of temperature. Well, it just so happens we can actually derive that now. Okay, so if we want to, um, you know, work out an expression for dH now for the specific case of an ideal gas. Okay, well, for an ideal gas, for the case of an ideal gas, we have the ideal gas equation of state, PV equals RT, right? And we could do this with, you know, our other equation of state. It's just ideal gas is, is pretty easy to work with. Um, and we'll be able to get out this um, relationship that enthalpy is only a function of T, right? We'll be able to derive um, this very important result. All right, so what am I going to do with this? Well, CP dt, okay, I just leave that. That's just going to be CP of an ideal gas, okay? But if I look at this term now, Okay, we want to uh, simplify this for the case of an ideal gas. So the first thing of interest then is working out an expression for partial V, partial T at constant P. Okay, so I need to differentiate V with respect to T at constant uh, P. So solving my ideal gas equation of state for V, I have V is equal to RT over P. So then partial V, partial T at constant P for the case of an ideal gas is partial RT over P partial T at constant P. Okay, so P is constant. Okay, so I'm running out of room on my board. So P is constant. So R is already constant. It's my molar gas constant. P is constant. So I can pull out R over P. Okay, then I'm just going to be left with partial T, partial T constant p. So that finally I get that partial v partial t at constant p then is just equal to r over p because dt dt at constant p is just 1. Okay, so dv dt at constant p is just equal to r over p. So now if I plug that in okay, and try and simplify I'll get that dh of an ideal gas is equal to 
Cp ideal gas dt plus. Okay, so I have V. <coughs> so V. Okay, so since I just worked out this in terms of R over P, for V, let me plug in RT over P minus. So now I have minus T times dV dt at constant P, where dV dt at constant P is R over P. So this would be minus um, RT over P okay, dP. Well, RT over P minus RT over P, right? that's just zero. So we're left with, for the case of an ideal gas, that dH of an ideal gas is only equal to Cp ideal gas dt. Right? For an ideal gas, enthalpy only has, uh, is only a function of T. Right? And the enthalpy of an ideal gas is independent of pressure. Cool. Okay, great. Okay, so that's our first example, enthalpy with independent variables T and P. Uh, we'll work out some more uh, in some more screencasts. Um, and then uh, once we get to residual properties, uh, that allow us to really be able to um, work out property changes for real fluids um, using any two uh, desired independent variables, uh, typically temperature and pressure or temperature and um, molar volume.